Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is an ultra slim laptop. And ultra slim laptops always mean three things. Firstly, superior portability. They're light, slim, of course, and easy to slide into bags. Secondly, it almost always means very attractive industrial design. Unlike with women, who I like with a bit more meat on their bones, I like my folding computers to be slim. They look sleek, elegant, modern. And the final commonality of ultra slim laptops is they're crap for gaming on. And that's just logical, isn't it? Because slim means compromising on power, especially when it comes to graphics processing chips. Powerful GPUs are big, power hungry, and need lots of efficient cooling. And that means generous heat sinks and big fans. And all of those things mean thickness. Good PC gaming is chunky. That's just how it is. Well, allow me to introduce you to the gaming laptop that utterly changed my mind on that. This is the Aorus X7, and the guys at Gigabyte threw one at me to check it out. So, firstly, let me show you what it can do. This is Hitman Absolution, a very graphically sophisticated game, very pretty, very complex, lots of lighting effects, lots of characters on the screen at the same time, it does all kinds of pretty things. And the Aorus X7 not only can run it smoothly, but can run it smoothly maxed out. Now, day one with this laptop, I was thinking something this slim can't possibly be a true gaming PC. All of the grand bluster from the marketing materials was surely just that, bluster, to sell these things. So, I installed Hitman Absolution and I cranked it up to ultra settings, fully expecting to hit the wall and see things stutter and chunk down and the frame rate to tank the instant I wandered into that Chinese marketplace with all those swarms of people. I was thinking to myself, okay, I'll max it out here and then start dropping various settings down one by one until I find the point where it plays smoothly and that will tell me how powerful this thing is in practical terms. The only problem is I didn't have to do that. I could almost hear the X7 giggling at me, mocking me for my arrogance, smirking at me for my assumptions as it simply chewed right through this pretty game at 1080p at ultra settings. Settings that make my own mid-range gaming laptop from Alienware curl into a ball in the corner and vomit with envy and shame. So, what's the secret here? How do you get so much power in a laptop this skinny? Well, it's pretty simple, but pretty clever. See, instead of loading up on a big, fat, heat-spewing, high-end gaming GPU, the Aorus X7 stays slim by using a pair of slimmer GTX 765M chips in an SLI setup with 4GB of GDDR5 dedicated DDR memory. <sighs> For those of you new to the lingo, SLI means Scalable Link Interface, and it's NVIDIA's clever technology for getting multiple graphics cards working as one number crunching monster. It's a pretty common setup in the most brutal desktop gaming rigs, but not so common in gaming laptops. And for those of you intimately familiar with NVIDIA's line, Aorus claim that these dual 765Ms spit out performance on par with a GTX 780M. And from my tests, that seems about right actually, but we'll get to the raw benchmark numbers in a moment. First, let's look at the essential bits. It's churning away on a 4th generation Haswell-based Core i7 CPU. It supports dual M SATA SSD drives in a RAID 0 setup for super fast access and loading times, and a traditional 2.5 inch hard drive alongside them. 4 memory slots which you can max out at up to 32GB of RAM, but come stock with either 4 or 8GB of DDR3L1600. So that's the basic guts, what about the outside bits? The keyboard first, it's really nice actually. Quite similar feeling to a MacBook chiclet style keyboard, of course being an ultra slim machine, they're shallow keys with short throw, but they feel wonderful and responsive in use, whether it's typing or indeed gaming on. It's backlit of course, and the WSAD keys are slightly more strongly highlighted than the other keys, and this is one of only a couple of external giveaways that this slick looking machine is actually built for gamers. The keyboard is full size, including a number bank, and as you'd expect on a gaming rig, it's built with anti-ghosting tech to avoid multi-key combination conflicts. Down the left side, there's a bank of programmable macro keys, and at the top of those, there's a G key which lets you switch between color-coded sets with a tap of your finger. And the software used to organize and set up all of these custom macros is very simple to use. It's easy, logical, very visual, and a complete breeze to set up. The same goes for the command and control software, actually. Very easy and logical setup to tweak whatever you need tweaked. And that, of course, also means fan control. There are three modes here, Stealth, Auto, and Turbo. 
and at full speed the fans are noticeably audible of course. But they're not what I'd call loud, certainly not by gaming rig standards anyway. And the pitch of the fan noise isn't that horrible ear-piercing screaming whine either. It's a comparatively pleasant lower pitched and altogether more subtle whirring. So even at top speed, it's easily one of the better sounding high performance rigs I've experienced. And again, that's thanks in large part to the thoughtful, clever thermal design. The heat generating components are all carefully spaced and all tied to a common cooling system with dual fans and four vents. If you max it out and keep it there, things do get warm, but never what I'd call hot to the touch. In fact, I'd go as far to say it was surprisingly cool, even under benchmarking conditions. Around the back there's power in and a pair of USB 2.0 sockets, nice and uncluttered and out of the way for the leave-in type stuff, like your gaming mouse for instance, which of course you will be using because touchpads are garbage for gaming. And the touchpad here is no exception. PC games just aren't meant to be played with touchpads, but for the normal stuff you'll be doing, it is a decent pad. It's slick and smooth and nicely responsive, and of course multi-touch. But all in all, it's pleasant and serviceable, and on a gaming rig, that's all it needs to be. Around the left and right sides you'll find two HDMI outputs, a mini display port, three USB 3.0 sockets in total, an RJ45 for wired networking, an SD card reader, and even an old school D15 VGA connector if that's how you roll, and your audio in and outs, which as you can see by the red light leaking out here, are optical ready for your surround sound needs. Which brings us to sound. <laughs> There's a pair of speakers built in, nicely spaced at the outside front edges, and a pair of woofers mounted on the underside. The sound quality from this setup won't outshine even a relatively modest external speaker setup, but it was surprisingly crispy. It had good depth and a pleasant tone. It wasn't superb in the very low end or the highest of the highs, but the mid-range was very well covered and the volume was reasonable. And even in explosion-rich games, it gave a rich, complete sound that I have absolutely no reason to complain about. The screen is a 17-inch 1080p Full HD setup. It has a low reflective matte finish, which muted reflections quite nicely indeed, but without fuzzing up the image as some matte coatings can do. And it has a nippy 8 millisecond response time, which is exactly what you want for gaming. It's reasonably bright, and at 72% NTSC color gamut, it gives a gratifying, rich, and tonal image. And it's not the brightest or richest screen you'll find out there. The viewing angles are pretty good, so you won't be fiddling with the angle much. And while at 17 inches, a 1080p laptop screen isn't super high res by today's standards, the image is very well defined and nice and crisp. Online gamers will find joy here too, because as nifty as Wi-Fi is, and you do get 802.11ac here, we all know that wired is the fastest, most stable way to go. And on board here is not just your ordinary stock Ethernet controller, but a killer LAN chip, which I've never come across before, but apparently ensures zero packet loss, so that's damn nifty. There is, of course, a webcam built in at the top of the screen, but it's not fantastic. It's just a very generic middle-of-the-road webcam kind of thing. And as a laptop, it, of course, has a battery built in. But as a 17-inch gaming laptop rig, that battery won't really amaze you with its long life. That said, battery life isn't atrocious, but it's not what I'd call wonderful. <laughs> And let's face it, 99.9% .9 of owners, gamers, will only ever unplug it briefly to move it to a different room, so not such a big deal if it doesn't have the best battery life in the world, is it? So, it's mechanically very sound, it looks fantastic, it feels really nice to actually use, and despite being ultra slim, it has good options for internal upgrading of storage and memory, and it kicks a truly surprising amount of ass when it comes to gaming performance, all while still being skinny and easily totable in a backpack, and coming in at 3 kilograms. It is the thinnest machine you can get with dual GPU SLI graphics, and its general build quality, its fit and finish, all feel high-end premium. It's a really, 
really nice bit of kit. In short, I loved it. More than I expected to, actually. Especially from a new brand. Well, kind of new. I mean, Gigabyte are underneath it all, and those guys have tons of experience in building really nice gaming rigs. But still, I suspect this new brand, Aorus, is a brand worth keeping an eye on. And the X7, in its own rights, impressed me. It just ripped everything I threw at it. And yes, I know I'm only showing you FPSs here, but that doesn't mean that's all I tested. It just happens to be all I recorded while making this demo footage. I just must have been in a shooter mood. Even Hitman Absolution in ultra settings, the toughest thing I had to throw at it ran like butter in the sun. Absolution's own internal benchmarking showed that even under the highest settings, I was never dipping below 40 frames per second, and usually maintaining well above that. Now, while all my reviews are always based around what something is like to actually live with and use in a very practical, day-on-day, real-life kind of framework, I know that hardcore PC gamers also love to splooge over the raw numbers these things make, the benchmark scores, and the comparative bar graphs, which lets you tell other PC gamers how big your EP really is. So here are the numbers on the Aorus X7. Without any special tweaking or other little score nudging cheats and tricks right out of the box, the X7 spat out some very respectable 3D mark scores. Naturally, in the Ice Storm tests, which are designed for boring, stock, non-gaming type rigs, the X7 kablooied right through it with a result of 122,951 points. Under Cloudgate, the test specifically designed for gaming laptop rigs, it churned out a very respectable 16,812. And under Firestrike, the test designed to tax even custom-built desktop gaming rigs, the X7 dropped out a score of 4,202. And all of this in context generates a rating superior to 45% of all gaming rigs out there, laptop and desktop alike. And that 4202 places it very firmly ahead of the average gaming laptop score of just 3,364, and far, far beyond the average score of other skinny ultralight laptops. And it absolutely kicked the teeth in on my own gaming laptop, an Alienware MX14. And yes, yes, I know, I know, you PC gamer supremacists are already rolling your eyes. Ugh, Alienware, ugh, with a noob, Alienware, ugh. But you know what, the PC isn't my primary gaming experience, and I got it for a damn good price, and it served me reasonably well. Until, of course, I experienced the X7, which now I find it really hard to go back to my Alienware because it just feels so much slower than it used to be. Now, price, of course, will vary depending on where you are in the world, so I won't give it here. But a quick Google will churn out what it'll cost you wherever you are and whenever you're watching this. Now, don't expect a super bargain price. This is a high-end gaming rig we're talking about here, after all. Not some slapped-together generic jobby from Acer or HP or something. But matched up against the competing gaming machines, it is a reasonable price point. But that is your lot on this beastie. Drop a comment and let us know how you think it stacks up bang for buck. And, if you like, throw in your rig's 3D mark scores to see how it all stacks up against those. My MX-14 hangs its screen hinge in shame right now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.